If you're looking to play thousands of your favorite retro game ROMs on your smartphone or even on your tablet without jailbreaking a thing, you've come to the right video. Let me show you how to set up the Eclipse emulator so you can start playing your favorite retro games on your mobile device on the go. And be sure to stay to the end for an important bonus tip that you don't want to miss. The Eclipse emulator is special in that it allows you to play game ROMs from platforms like the NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Sega Master System, and even the Game Gear. Let's start by grabbing a game ROM to play in the emulator. This is my new game, Raven's Core, for Game Boy and Game Boy Color. It's available at forever8bit.com and linked for you in the video description. No matter what game content you download, it will need to be uncompressed out of zip format in order to work correctly in the Eclipse emulator. Here's how that's done. While I'm demonstrating this in iOS on an iPhone, it works in a similar fashion on Android. The goal is to get to the files in the download section on your device so that you can uncompress the zip file. In this case, you tap on the Files application on the home screen, then tap and hold on your zip file, and you'll see a listing for Uncompressed. Simply tap on Uncompressed, and it will create a new folder with the uncompressed files in it. Tap on that folder, and you'll find the game ROM, along with the digital box art and a digital instruction manual included. This next step is optional, but it does add value to the gameplay experience. If you want to add a wireless Bluetooth controller to your device, Simply go into the Settings section, locate Bluetooth, and then activate pairing on your wireless controller. In this case, I'm using a SteelSeries Nimbus controller, which works great across a number of different Apple devices. If you want one, I have it linked for you in the video description. Once you've optionally paired your wireless Bluetooth controller, you can go back to the home screen on your device. Now that the legwork's out of the way, let's launch Eclipse for the first time. In your web browser of choice, navigate to eclipseemu.me. I have this website linked for you in the video description. To start the setup process, tap the red Get button. You'll see a message in the center of the screen underneath the Eclipse logo that it's redirecting in 10 seconds. There's nothing to do here and nothing to tap here. Just wait the 10 seconds for this process to complete. Once the countdown's done, you'll be taken to the Eclipse Setup menu. Near the center of the screen, you'll see a menu item called Setup Eclipse. Tap on this to continue. All right, I'm not getting the aspect ratio police called on me, but you do have the chance here to change the aspect ratio from its original aspect to stretch to the full width of your device. Make your selection here and tap on continue in the center of the screen. Next up, you'll have the chance to choose the color of the skin for the emulator. Its default color is red and I'm gonna leave it at that, but you can choose any color that you like from the list of choices. Once you've made your selection, tap on continue. Next up is the license agreement. Even if you don't read this over in its entirety, I think it's great to know that the Eclipse emulator does not collect any personal data from you. That's a welcome change in this day and age. Once you've read over the license agreement to your satisfaction, tap on Agree and Continue. Next up, you'll see some guidance on how to get content into the Eclipse emulator. We'll take a closer look at this in the next steps. Read over this information, and once you're done, tap on Close Setup to complete the setup process. You'll now be at Eclipse's main menu. I think there are a few settings that are worth taking a peek at here before you start playing your games. Take a look in the top left corner and you'll see a gear icon. Tap the gear icon to access the settings menu. If you paired an optional wireless Bluetooth controller, we'll need to make sure Eclipse can see it. Right underneath the listing for keyboard, if you just press either the D-pad or one of the buttons on your wireless controller, it will be recognized by Eclipse at this point. And if you tap on the name of the controller, you can configure the button layouts from here. Whether you use the standard button configuration or set a custom configuration, once you're done, tap back in the top left corner to continue. Next up, scroll down in the menu until you see the section for emulation. There are two toggles here that you may want to consider. The first one is hide controls. If you want to hide the virtual controls, for example if you're using a wireless Bluetooth controller, you want to toggle this on. But if you plan to just use the touchscreen controls on your device, leave this turned off. There's a toggle switch here for audio. The only time you would really need to use this is if you have any difficulty with sound in the browser. If audio is not working correctly, just turn this off and then turn it back on and it should work correctly. Once you're done, press the back button to go back to the Eclipse main menu. Ready to jam? Let's get a game loaded into Eclipse. In the top right corner, you'll see a plus button. Tap on that button. You'll see a list of locations from where you can load a ROM into the emulator. Files points to the storage on your device and these other listings point to online storage. Remember that if you use one of these menu choices to download content online, it will need to be either in uncompressed format or uncompressed once it's loaded into Eclipse. 
In this case, the game ROM's already saved on the device's storage, so tap on Files to continue. From the list of choices that appear, the only one that makes sense, of course, is Choose File. Tap on that. You'll see the folder that we previously uncompressed that contains the game ROM in it. Tap on that folder, and inside the folder you'll find the game ROM. In this case, it's a .gb file because it's a Game Boy game. Tap on the game that you want to run. Also, don't miss this important step. Make sure to tap on the game screen in order to activate sound. And here's that great bonus tip I promised you. If you save Eclipse to your home screen, you won't have to go through the setup process each time. If you happen to be using Safari for iOS, here's how that's done. In the bottom center of the browser, tap the forward button. Scroll down through the list of choices and you'll see a listing here that says Add to Home Screen. Tap on it and you'll be prompted to name the new icon on your home screen. Tap on Add in the top right corner and Eclipse will be ready to go every time you're ready to play. Now that you know how to play these games on your mobile devices, why not learn how to play them on real hardware using this incredibly cool Easy Flash multi-game cart?